friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. Tonight we're talking about what we can't rule out. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. Happy Friday. How are you, my friend? Man, I'm doing great. Doing, doing great. So there are known knowns, there are known unknowns, and there are unknown unknowns. So I guess what we're talking about in tonight's show is the known unknowns, I guess, the things that we know we don't know. Well, uh, we for sure can't rule out the unknown unknowns because we have no idea what they are, right? So and you we don't even know what they are. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just going to blindside us on some random Tuesday, right? So, uh, we, <laughs> so that, That's interesting uh, that you mentioned that, though. When we talk about what we can't rule out, it does bring to mind the hidden possible, which we did a show about right. just, a, just a few weeks ago. We talked about the different kinds of possible. There's the adjacent, there's the deep, and then there's the hidden. There's the things that we just we don't know anything about at all. But here we're actually going to talk about ideas that have at least been introduced. And can we yeah. say, absolutely not, that's, that's not true? Well, we can say that about fewer things than you might think. And I think this is a really wonderful example of this. This, is, this link is to an a- academic paper. I actually believe I originally saw it, it, was, it, was, well, it was on social media, but I think it was on NBC.com. Somebody had done a story about this. But the academic paper is on the topic of prior indigenous technological species. It's a well-written paper, and it explores whether in the history of this solar system, not in the history of the universe or in the history of the galaxy or anything like that, but in the history of this solar system, are we the first technological civilization? And it was interesting to me, I saw that because I had seen something just a couple weeks before talking about how there may have been prior technological civilizations on Earth, how that can't be completely ruled out. And I'd never heard anyone seriously suggest that before, you know, outside of a kind of an Art Bell kind of a context. I'd yeah, never... yeah, I was about to say, this is the domain of crackpots normally, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> that's right. It's... I feel the crackpot uh, alarm going off in my head when I consider things like ancient technological civilizations and stuff. Prior to the, our known civilizations that, that started everything, prior to Egypt and things, I mean, there was enough time from the time that we became humanity, basically, to those civilizations that you could have had technological civilizations rise and fall, but we've got no evidence of it, right? The, the problem with ancient technological civilizations on Earth is, okay, where are the fossilized cars, right? You know, where, yeah, where are yeah. the big computer banks or just even the power lines, right? You, you ought to find something. But in this paper, Jason T. Wright, and he's from the Department of Astronomy and Astrophysics at the Center for Exoplanets and Habitable Worlds, at, uh, I believe it's the University of Pennsylvania. Okay, so not a crackpot. Okay, and a serious scientist who's doing serious work. What he talked about, and in the earlier piece that I had read about prior technological civilizations living on Earth, what they talk about is these things happening back in another geological age, right? So the plates have shifted, everything's gone lava, and although we do have a few fossil remnants from earlier times, most everything gets kind of pretty much steamrolled over. So if there was so something there... So this is there, not humanity. This is not prior technological human civilization. So he's, that's right. He's, it, he's saying maybe there was some creature that was completely different from us that, that rose to high technological civilization. We can't rule it out, is what he's right. saying. We, right. And, and so to look for the techno-signatures of those, and they talked about this in this climate piece too, is you're looking for some very kind of arcane stuff. You're looking for chemical readouts in the soil layer that shouldn't be there, right? Or not in the soil layer, excuse me, in the strata of the earth, right? Where you suddenly you hit a lot more iron down there than you should have. Or uh, I, I don't know that it's iron, but it's that kind of thing, right? Where the geological record doesn't quite account for the composition of the planet. So it's, it's, it's highly yeah, technical stuff. There's obvious be- spikes in uh, greenhouse gases or something uh, that uh, you can see in the uh, geological strata. Yeah, and in fact, that's the one they're talking about. It's like, did they come right. before? Did they wipe themselves out with greenhouse gas? Who knows? I mean, one of the interesting things about that is you look at the planet Venus, and Venus is one of the places he talks about. Obviously, Venus does not seem like a planet that would be hab- habitable, right? It would not be a welcoming environment for a technological civilization. It's like, well, maybe this is what they did to it, right? <laughs> <This is> maybe <laughs> Venus is the... Is the, great, is the great warning story. You talk about how Mars potentially was once much more hospitable to life 
than than it currently is. Maybe something happened there too. So those are kind of interesting. I don't know, just kind of stories to consider. It's like, wow, is there is is it possible that there that there is anything to this? And we're talking about really long time scales. Billions of years ago was something happening. But also he mentions that you can't rule out technological civilizations coexisting with us in the solar system now. And this is mentioned more or less in passing. It's mentioned in the introduction because the bulk of the paper is spent on talking about these extinct technological civilizations. But that one just kind of blew my mind. I read that and I'm like, really? Seriously? And there's a couple little references that I haven't checked them all the way through. But I assume they're saying something true, although it sounds really surprising. As recently as 1998, according to this paper, and really do need to check this one, Carl Sagan suggested that the moons of Mars might be artificial objects. Can you imagine such a thing? It's it's kind of yeah. it's hard for me to get my head around that, but he may have he may have said that they were once built by this ancient civilization or so you know in a moment of wild speculation. He probably didn't seriously entertain the idea, but just again things we can't rule out. Yeah. That's- or there's another current astronomer who suggests that we should be looking for. I just love this image. Okay, city lights out on Kuiper Belt objects. So we should be aiming our telescopes out at the Kuiper Belt looking at those objects out there and seeing if we don't see some lights shining on those on those distant objects. We talked, I don't know, was it a few months ago about astronomers explaining that, yeah, actually there could be a lot more planets out there in the solar system that we know nothing about, that there could be big objects way out there that we don't know anything about. And that's a, I don't know, intriguing idea as it is, kind of a mind-blowing idea as it is. But then when you think about, we get way out there and we find one and it's got lights on it. I, I just love that image. When we're looking for intelligent life elsewhere, when we're, when we're doing the steady thing, we invariably are applying ourselves to the cosmos, right? We're, we're looking for things that others would see from us, like we're looking for intelligent radio signals. We're looking for lights and things like that that somebody might pick up from us, chemical traces like greenhouse gases from uh, exoplanets, things like that. But I read this interesting article, Phil, about some smart creatures we share the planet with right now, dolphins. And for years, they've been trying to translate these clicks and the sounds that these dolphins make. And it's evident that they're communicating with one another. But, like, we can't make heads or tails of this. They're not communicating quite like we are. Right. And some neurologists doing autopsies on dolphins have found a lobe of the brain, and they believe they may have a theory about what's going on with these uh, creatures. It may be that instead of communicating the way we do, that this particular lobe in their brain allows them to convert an image that they see into these clicks. It'd be like me sharing a picture from my cell phone with your cell phone, Phil, and you get to see what I see. They, They may have an ability to do that with one another. So if they see a shark, they don't have a word for shark that they share with the pod. They share a picture of the, of the shark. They can convert that into some sort of signal that they, they can then share. Clicks are kind of like an old analog modem, basically. Something They're... like that. And so you can imagine why we've run up against a hard wall in trying to translate that into some kind of human-type language. Here's a word, here's a word. No, that's not working. It's not like a word-to-word kind of thing. So we got to lay those clicks out on a grid somehow. And, and so when it comes to finding aliens, maybe we need to broaden our horizons. You know, it turns out aliens may, may very well be very alien. So maybe we need to take that into account when we're looking. We can almost so. count on them being very alien, exactly. And right. the life forms on our planet give us good reason to believe that that's the case. And you know what's really interesting about that, Stephen? When you think about it in those terms... It's easy to draw a line between a civilization that's not technological. We might say dolphins, maybe they do have a civilization, but it's not a technological civilization. But if they're right. doing that, that's kind of like technology, right? I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's kind of like they've, they've it's evolved. A, it's, a biological, it's like a biological analog or something to technology. It's, uh, exactly, they're, yeah. They're out there taking selfies and sharing them. You know? If something like that could exist you could easily have a quote-unquote technological civilization that's sitting there in the fossil record and you just can't even see it, right? Because all we're seeing now is bones. <laughs> we're not actually seeing what was going on in the inter- interactions between these creatures, right? Because you would have no idea if Earth were wiped out today and some paleontologists from another planet came here in a few million years and they found all these dolphin fossils, right? 
that would never be part of what they would know about them. So you could look right. at them and you could say, well, th this was an interesting aquatic animal, but there's no reason to believe, at least through anything I can think of, that we could detect that they were doing anything like that, right? So, so a technological civilization could actually be a lot easier to hide than we think. And it actually right. adds credence to the argument that we can't rule it out. And if we can't rule that out, what's left? What can we rule out? If we can't rule out prior civilizations on Earth, I have one very oh. intelligent friend who thinks there are aliens living among us now, today. Wow. That, the, yeah. that they're actually here. And not a nut, you know, not a tinfoil hat, but who honestly believes that. And of course, we entertain ideas like the simulation hypothesis, the matrix, right? We've talked about Boltzmann brains, how the whole universe just sort of flashed into being and we're, we're living in this bizarre simulation that could that could pop out at any moment. Now, there's a principle called Occam's razor that says we need to be skeptical right. about these kinds of things, things that we yeah. shouldn't become fanboys around any of these ideas. We shouldn't decide that you know, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's definitely aliens, and I believe it 100%. But there's almost an opposite principle to Occam's razor, and I haven't seen it articulated anywhere, which is just the, maybe we shouldn't commit to any of these, but that doesn't mean we can exclude them either. Well, we need to have some humility, right, about possibilities we can't rule out. As recently as I think like the 1930s, we were unaware of civilizations that we now are very much aware of human civilizations like the Hittites and other they're mentioned in the Bible we think that it's fictional it, it, they didn't ever, ever exist well hold, hold hold up now we know that they were a big deal that was as recently as like 70 years ago our best and brightest had no reason to believe they existed so there's a lot we don't know about our own history and if you go back further if you're talking billions of years time scales and uh, Maybe we really can't rule out some of these things. So If you go back uh, 100 years, you know, we only thought there was one galaxy, right? Not, yeah, yeah. We didn't even know that there was more than one galaxy in the universe. And 20 years ago, we couldn't say with certainty there were exoplanets, right? That's, that's right. That's right. And now we know, right, that, that there's a lot of them. We, do we know what's on any of them? Do we know what's going on in any of them? Not yet. We're, we're just at the very beginning of starting to learn about some of that stuff. So I think that's exactly right. It's the skepticism of Occam's razor coupled with the humility of, you know what, we just don't know. We don't know what we're going to find out next week. And I, I think that actually brings it right back to your unknown unknowns, right? There are so many of those out there that a little bit of humility in the face of the vast sea of knowledge that we have yet to acquire is probably the right way to go. So I'm not on board that there have been any technological civilizations in the solar system before us. I think there's good reason to believe there probably haven't been, but I'm not ruling it out. To be fair, I would say that's what the, uh, the author of that paper is saying. He's, he's not saying that there was those things, but again, we need to be humble and uh, not rule it out completely. So. Let's be open to the idea. And you know what? Speaking of being open to ideas, we're going to be back next week with three brand new shows, and we're going to bring some new ideas that we can be open to and explore. It's been great talking with you, Stephen. It's been great having you all with us. And until next time, live to see it.